Well, first of all, thank you to all for coming. Thank you to Mike Zerlo for arranging this and allowing me to do this here in this room. Um, <clears throat> I will tell you, the first thing I thought of when I got up the, this morning was the biblical passage, somehow it is, that says, that day will come. And um, truthfully, um, that's where we are. I, um, the 45th Senate District is without any question, the best in the entire state. It's also the largest Senate district in the entire state, 6,400 square miles and bigger than the state of Connecticut. But it certainly has the best people in it who are working hard to improve their own lives, but more importantly, to improve the lives of their community. And I can't say, I really can't say enough about what an honor and real, real privilege <clears throat> it has been for me to be able to do this. But as difficult as this day is, and it's, it's actually more difficult than I thought it would be, um, it's time. And so I will not run for re-election in November. But I will still be here until December 31st. So uh, some are mistaking that, that I'm quitting today, and I'm not. Um, <clears throat> I just believe that it's, it's time, and uh, it, it, you know, to talk about some of the things that we've done, I've done five constitutional amendments, and they're not easy because you have to go through two separate sessions of the legislature, and then you have to have the vote of the public, and you have to make sure that all the groups are on board, and there aren't too many people saying that it shouldn't happen, getting convincing everyone that they should. I think the last one, uh, the constitutional amendment that has the land swap that says that roads and bridges and all of that and laying of fiber is important and can be done alongside a road even if it is um, going through the forest preserve. So that was truly a good one. Um, other things I focused on is just improving cell coverage. The Northway is better. We still have a stretch. I lost a call right as I went through exit 30. So, uh, so we know where the, the empty spots are, that, <clears throat> and an internet service. And that's going to be a focus of the coming year that uh, we don't leave the North Country and the Adirondack Park residents behind because we need to bring everybody into the, the new day where cell coverage and internet is important for health, for safety, and for our economy. So I'm really, really going to focus on that this year. And, you know, looking back, some of the things that I've been able to work on up here, um, certainly Whispering Pines the, uh, was a disaster. And uh, with the help of the state, and we were able to get that fixed. And I think we probably have two of the nicest standalone mausoleums in the entire country now. So uh, that was very, very important. Working with Champlain Valley Services and getting the use of um, the building that was over there in Schuyler Falls uh, sitting empty, and it took a while, but we got the use of that, and that's fully functioning and doing such a great job um, helping with this problem that we have had for a number of years, the opioid crisis. So the rail to trail, the Fishu games, all of these things are important to the North Country and really bringing us uh, a better economy. But uh, here in Plattsburgh, so much with the transportation industry uh, and uh, you know, we've done our best to get everybody from Albany up here to see our companies and see how important they are. Uh, Nova Bus, Bombardier, the whole Amtrans program that says, you know, this is a big industry and we are a center for it. We have the suppliers here. We have the big companies here. So that's really critical and very, very important. And I'm, I'm proud of all that and um, I'm proud of the work that we have done and mostly proud of the constituent service and the accessibility that I think uh, has been our trademark. And um, 
you know, my staff has just been wonderful about making sure that we help everybody we can. And, you know, we can't solve every problem, and we try, but uh, it just can't happen. But I have had a great staff that works hard at seeing that we try to do that. So nobody gets elected on their own. You can say you want to run for something, and there's a lot of elected here, and you know that um, that's the easiest statement you made. From then on, it's difficult. You have to have supporters, you have to have committee people, you have to have the finances to do it, and the ability to get out and do it. And so I thank everyone who has helped me, and, and many of you are right here in this room. So um, 13 elections and, um, <laughs> you know, a lot of campaigning, and uh, the new thing with moving the primary up has uh, made the campaign season even longer. So uh, St. Lawrence County was having an endorsement hearing tonight. So we decided that this was the day to do the announcements. And my family have been very supportive. My five of my six kids were home for Thanksgiving and 16 of 18 grandchildren. So we were able to talk about this and, and get ready for it today. Um, my youngest son, I thought put it pretty well. He said, Mom, it's not bad for 25 years for your third act. <laughs> and uh, because before that, I was a 19-year stay-at-home mom. And before that, I was a teacher and did a little bit of real estate in between. So uh, a lot of people have helped me along the way. And uh, I'm so grateful because it, it's amazing the people I have met and the things that are going on in this district and, and just the wonderful, wonderful examples of what takes place. Um, I can't help but recall um, the, uh, the code talker, the last of the Mohawk code talkers uh, talking to Levi Oaks and he said, General MacArthur was sitting next to me and he uh, told me what to put in and I put the code in and no one ever broke that code. Uh, and just to hear that and know that this is the man that did something like that. And that's happened over and over throughout the district. Uh, all of the things that happened in Lake Placid with the Olympics and, and these games that we're going to have and getting those venues up to date so they're no longer historic. They're going to be some of the best venues in the entire country. And that's important. And my staff, um, this is almost, and we have a whole year left, but we're all looking at it like breaking up a family. And my cousin Nancy's here who helped me out in the very beginning, getting acquainted with Plattsburgh and telling me what I needed to know and needed to do. And I did follow her directions all the time. So it was very, very helpful. But all of my staff has just worked so hard and Bonnie's here. And Bonnie kept the office going and calls and seeing people and, uh, you know, we've continued to do that even though we haven't uh, been able to have the office here. But um, I am just a very, very grateful person <laughs> and uh, I don't think I ever imagined this was the direction my life would take me and this is what I would be doing. And at the end of next year, it'll be 25 years following Senator Stafford's 37 years. And you put that together, you will have had two senators in the past 62 years. So I think um, I thank you. And, uh, and I will take questions if anybody has any. Thank you. Anybody? How long did it take you to consider this and make the decision? Well, I considered it last time, you know, and I didn't want to do that yet. Uh, we had a lot of things in the fire. Um, this time, I truthfully was one way one day, one way the next day. And uh, somebody asked me at the, at the earlier press event, what was it that really made you decide? And I said, well, the day I went for groceries at Hannaford and I left my wallet, phone combination in the grocery cart and it was two hours later before I realized I didn't have it. Fortunately, I called Hannaford and they had it. So I said, that is a sign 
so. <laughs> and you know, I really, I, I want to, I would never want to do anything halfway. And uh, I just think that it's time to, uh, to step aside. So, but I have a whole year and I have a lot I plan on doing and a lot to do. So uh, I appreciate, but I can't thank you enough for being here and for supporting me and, and for the messages I've gotten. I got a nice phone call from the governor. And uh, so uh, he's done a lot for the North Country the money he's given to the airport up here, the money that we've gotten. The regional economic development councils that were his idea, it made so that the money in the state gets spread geographically. Doesn't all go in one direction. There are 10 regions and everybody gets something. And that was not happening before. And the support that he's given for these games and the support he's given for uh, you know, just improving the venues so we're not historic anymore, we're really relevant in that area. And, uh, and then we have the rail to trail system and you know, it's worked. Uh, somebody asked me what did I think, you know, was my best uh, achievement. And I think um, that my best when I bring people together and we sit down, talk about the issues and try to see how they can be resolved. And uh, so, you know, I, I just very, it's bittersweet because, um, you know, it's an end of, well, it's not quite, so we have a whole year and I'm really going to be busy, but, you know, I've loved, loved being part of this and being part of these communities and being able to go into places like Dannemore and know people and know what's going on and Lion Mountain and, uh, you know, Constable and uh, Churubusco stopping at the the gun, gas, guitar, and grocery <laughs> store. I love talking, stopping, talking to Dick. And uh, it, it's just, it's, you know, it has just increased my life so much. Uh, I can't thank you all enough for voting for me and for supporting me. What was it like being in the minority? Well, I was in the minority in the assembly, so I did have some experience. So I didn't go into it cold. But you know, I've always said, and I work with them. I was just at education hearings in New York City. Um, where they want all the money, but uh, at least I was there as a voice for rural schools and upstate. But um, I've always said election day ends at midnight, thank God. And whoever gets elected, that's who you work with. And if you don't work with those people, you will not resolve anything. And so that's been my mantra, and I followed through on that. And, you know, I've. I can remember when I first got elected, somebody said, you're helping them, they're a Democrat. And I looked and I said, they're a constituent, what are you talking about? And that's the way we've operated and the staff has as well, so. Um, the Republican Party has lost some ground here in New York State. Do you worry about the direction your party is going in? I don't worry about the direction my Republican Party is going. I worry about some of the direction the state may be going in. All I heard yesterday was more money for education, let's raise taxes. And I think there, there is a point where you're going to make New York State unaffordable for average people to live here. And I don't want to see that happen. So I think we have to be a voice. I think we have to be a better voice maybe than we were when we were in the majority. You mentioned um, rural broadband and cell coverage as being priorities for next year. Any other kind of loose ends you're looking to tie up? Well, there's a lot of projects going on. There's always the education and making sure that our schools get what they need. And, uh, and actually, we have a, a merge school with Westport and Elizabethtown and continuing to help them with that merger. And they're now the Bouquet Valley Central School. And I think they've worked really hard and done it very well. Um, but just continuing to see that I can't think of exactly any other issues, but um, well, we've got this cash bail issue going on. I see Andy Wiley here in the back, and, and I will get directions from him on that. But, you know, that, that came about because there was a 17-year-old kid in Rikers Island that was picked up for stealing a backpack, and he was there for three years, and nobody ever, well, is that our fault? Our systems are working very well. There was a huge flaw in the system there, and they're actually down to the point where they're going to close the Rikers Island. 
but somebody missed the boat. You let a kid sit there for three years without attending and finding out when he's arraigned and how he's getting out of here and what you're doing for him. So hopefully there will be some amendments to that as we go forward. It has to be contained a little bit because otherwise you would pick up uh, somebody on the North Way with a lot of drugs made for selling and you can only say, here's an appearance ticket, I hope you show up. And, and they may never show up. And then what do the counties or the towns do? You have to do subpoenas, you have to try to locate these people and bring them back for arraignment. And that's going to be a huge expense. And, and it continues the huge expense to the, um, the mandates that the state continues to put down. And, and I have voted against bills, even though maybe they were a good idea, but when it's a mandate on a school district or another mandate on the towns or the counties, it's a no vote until, unless you're going to pay for it. So, you know, the STAR program, we want to protect that. That helps with property taxes, and we have to continue to do that. So, you know, I've had a lot of pieces of legislation passed. I think 322 bills that have passed and been signed by the governors since I, I've been. Um, a few when I was in the assembly were mostly local bills, but in the Senate, um, this year, you know, one, and I, I'll tell the story because we get to the end of session and, and I had a, a colleague who, I don't know, I guess I was in competition with, but uh, anyway, I would come back and I'd say, she's got all these bills and everything today we're passing were hers and I don't have any bills and Dan would say to me, do you really want more laws? And I said, well, no. Okay, so that's why you don't have more bills. But I had the largest percentage of my bills actually pass both houses and get signed by the governor this year, so um, on our side. So anyway, it does work. You can make it work, and um, it's just been really wonderful being part of it. Looking back 25 years, how intimidating was it to follow Ron Stafford in such a legend? It was intimidating, but I, I had the opportunity for seven years to work with him as his assembly member, and uh, Ron became a great friend who I think of very, very often and truly miss. Uh, when you think um, 69 he died at, and you know, what a loss and all that he's not seeing of his family and all that. But um, he, he was always good. He gave me a good piece of advice. He said, don't ever buy your, all your gas at one gas station. Move around. <laughs> Stop every place. And uh, the second one is when you're really, really tired, do not stand up and give a speech. So <laughs> that rings true all the time. And I've actually passed on giving a speech once or twice when I thought, he, right, he's right, I better not say anything. So, but um, he was a great person to, to succeed. Uh, certainly not replace. But he was uh, wonderful advice and um, and work. So and we remained friends. How involved in the next election do you plan to be? I hadn't really thought about it. I haven't gotten past today. <laughs> so um, you know, I think people need to get out and vote. I was a big supporter of the early voting, and uh, I think that's key. Uh, my daughter went early vote in Tennessee. She had three kids, was working, and after school sports and dinner and homework and all of that. And sometimes, you know, you don't have time to get there. And I think it affected women more than others. But today, a lot of people don't work in their hometown, and they are doing some traveling. So, and I think it worked pretty well. It, people went in and voted and came out, Greg? Yeah. Election? Yeah, thank you. I was worried you might say no, but I, 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 I knew you had enough respect to say yes no matter what, <laughs> even if it wasn't working. But uh, uh, I really, I had the bill to support that, and then you know it went through in the in the budget. So, but um, I, I just want to thank you all. This has been wonderful, and it is hard to do this. Um, but I intend to stay involved. I've been busy all my life. I, you have six kids, you're bound to be busy all your life. And uh, so I appreciate it, and I'll be involved and helpful in any way I can at any time. Patty, you're leaving a legacy like everyone else. You've had many, many years. We're very proud to have you. You should be very proud of what you've done. Oh, thank you, Tom. Tom Murphy, thank you. So.
No, but you'll be finding out probably tomorrow and the next day. <laughs> so, no. Do you anticipate endorsing that Well, we'll see as we go along, and, you know, and when you are involved, you certainly get involved in the political side towards election time, so yes. What's yeah. your message to people who are likely to A great deal of gratitude and thanks for um, enhancing my life in this way that I could be this senator from this wonderful, wonderful area for so many years, really. I can remember um, when I was first running, uh, I spoke at a senior citizens group and there was a lady in the farthest corner of the room and she raised her hand. So I said, yes, and she said, are you going to stay around for 37 years? <laughs> and I said, absolutely not. You can take that to the bank. <laughs> 25. <laughs> so, for the time. No, I did that for three days once. So, I'm really happy I didn't get it. <laughs> so, no, no. So, this, this is the high point, and I really have enjoyed it. So, thank you so much.